Hey, good morning, everyone. Hello, good Monday, good Monday morning to you all. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and I'm here on my Tinker's Cart Art page, as well as my segment on Craft Round the Clock this morning. So I'm so happy to be here painting with you on a bright, on a early in a Monday morning. Isn't it fun to get the week started off creatively? So say hello when you come on. I, as usual, I'm going to pull your comments up and try to look at them as I go. But if I miss one, you know that I will come back and answer it after. As you know, this will all be recorded. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you guys popping on. Say hello. Let me know where you're watching from this morning. And if you've been watching me, I've been coming to you from all over the place. So where am I this morning? It's like, um, where's Waldo, right? So this morning I am on my porch in Maine. I'm in Wells, Maine on the coast near the beach, beach life now for the summer. And as you know, I was with you from my home in Massachusetts last week, which we are selling and we have purchased a place in Florida. So in the winter, I'll see you from Florida. Good morning, Tracy. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you on Monday morning. Hey, Pam. Thank you guys for popping in. I really appreciate it. And have you seen, I've already been watching some crafting this morning. Did you see Funky Junk's cool sign? That was so cool. And Sweetie's Creations just did a great project. It's so fun for, to, for me to, even if I'm not crafting along or painting along, I love to watch and see what everyone's doing and uh, just the creative juices kind of get flowing. So good morning. Hey, Cynthia, let me know where you're from. I'd like to see, you know, my people from close by and from far away. Hey, Cheryl and Laurel, thanks for watching. What I thought we would do this morning is some gourd bird houses. So I started this one this morning and I'll show you how to get to this point and then we'll finish it up. Hey, Diane. Oh, it's so good to see everybody on. Good morning, good morning, Denise. So I have a lot of these little gourd uh, birdhouses and just little small gourds that were passed on to me from a, a, a friend who paints. And I've been dying to paint them. So I wasn't sure I wanted to do some beach scenes because I'm here at the beach, but I thought I'd do a floral sunflowers. You know, I'm in a big teal, well, not a phase anymore. I just love teal and all the colors pop so nice on it. So it's got the little hole for the birdhouse. I'm going to drill a couple little holes here and get a rawhide hanger. And that's how I'll finish it up with a coat of polyurethane. But I've got one here. I just base coated it in teal as well. And I've got a little one because the sunflowers look great painted on black as well. They really pop. We're going to do sunflowers and little bees. So I'm going to set this one aside and we'll get this one to this point and I'll show you what we're doing. The paint is taking a little while to dry this morning, so I have this one to, to demo on if this one hasn't dried yet. Hopefully, I won't have to put the air the hair dryer on. But that's a great um, tip too, if you're trying to get your things dried a little bit faster and you're not as patient. I know I'm not very patient. I give it a little uh, with my heat gun or my hair dryer to just uh, speed up the drying. Good morning, Tanya. And I saw Cindy from my um, from nearby in Central Mass. Good morning, all. So I'm just using my regular craft acrylic paints. Use whatever you have. I want you to start painting. I want you to have just a few simple supplies and get going and no excuses. Take a few minutes and just paint. So I'm using just, I have my deco art. I like the deco art paints. Uh, whatever you have, even if it's a heavy body tube acrylic, use whatever you have. A few brushes, nothing fancy for this. Some synthetic brushes, they're pretty inexpensive. Hi Karen, good morning. Love to see you all here. Thank you guys. So I'm going to just freehand my sunflowers on the gourd. It doesn't have to be really uh, technically sketched out or traced. If you feel more comfortable, piece of chalk, you can give yourself an idea. But I just start putting on my sunflowers and then I'll put my leaves and my bees around it. And, and you know, I always say, well, make it your own. You could do other kinds of flowers. You could do daisies. You could do daisies and sunflowers. You could put dragonflies. But today I'm going to do sun, show you sunflowers, show you bees. I know we've done them maybe before, but it's always fun to put them on different um, surfaces. Hey, Pam, good morning. Okay, so my sunflowers, I like to go dark to light when I paint a lot. You've probably seen me do that. So I'm going to use some burnt sienna, some orange, to base my sunflowers in and then I'm going to get brighter in the yellows as I layer on the color. I'm just going to use a big flat square brush. It's a nice brush to give me a nice petal shape. Sunflower petals are a little bit thinner and they, uh, on the end and then they get a little heavier as opposed to like a daisy I make it heavy on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some of my brown, my burnt sienna and my orange and I'm going to use a stroke something like this. I'm going to start with my brush a little bit more chisel edge 
so I can get that thin point, and then I'm just going to press it out and get a thicker point. So it's, I'm doing it upside down, so it's not giving you the best idea. But you're going to get kind of a thinner petal, and I'm going to layer those petals one on top of enough, each other as sunflowers are. Hey, Charlotte, I knew I'd see you this morning. Th thank you for tuning in, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint part of a sunflower peeking around the little bird house hole there so it's not like a whole flower. You could really paint it right around and use that as the center if you wanted. But I'm doing just kind of a little bit of a flower there. Maybe I'll do a bigger flower here, maybe a whole flower. I'm not worrying too much about where exactly they are, what exactly the petals look like. There's going to be so many layers on here that you're not going to see too much of these base petals, but see how they're starting in kind of a brownie orange just to get a nice deep base coat. And as the light ones go on, then the light ones will have, um, will be able to pop. If I started with very light petals and yellow, where could I go from there? I need to go from dark to light. So I'm just going to put a few little petals peeking out there. And I'm going to go around. You, you could do this the front if you wanted. I'm going to go around the whole birdhouse because if it's hanging, especially if it's decorative more than you're hanging it outside, you might want to have, you know, from the back, you'd be able to see the flowers. So let's just quickly put some flowers all around our birdhouse. And this doesn't have to be just painted on gourds. This little sunflower design showing you how to do the leaves and the flowers and things. You could paint them like on a little wooden birdhouse. Uh, on almost anything. So keep your eyes peeled. You know, I'm always saying look for all the unusual things to paint because if it doesn't move, you can paint it, right? Okay, so I'm going to just do a random, some whole sunflowers. It's going to be a nice big sunflower with a nice big round center. And then I like to put some that are just peeking out. If we did just whole sunflowers all around, it would look a little monotonous. It looks a little bit more like a bouquet of sunflowers if we do the little ones peeking out here and there. So that's how I'm starting. And we're going to fill in with leaves and bees and things. Oh, thanks, Cynthia. I always think sometimes it might be putting people to sleep. It might be kind of boring. I'm kind of like low key. But people seem to respond to it. So I want to make it so that you see how easy it is to paint. It's not hard. Even if you've never painted or you're more of a crafter, I encourage you to think about picking up a paintbrush. Hey, Zena, good morning. And so I've got... The base coat of where my flowers are going to go in that little bit of an orange and a little burnt sienna that's like a little red brown now i'm going to just set my i'm going to rinse my brush off because i'm going to a lighter color so i'll rinse my brush off but i want to really absorb all that water off i don't want to go for my yellows and have the paint watery i know sometimes we want a watered down technique but right now i don't want to so i'm getting all the water off the brush and i'm going to actually use that same brush for my leaves why don't i do that so I'm going to say what I have for empty spaces and just fill that in with leaves. Hey, Eric, good morning across the street. <laughs> and I'm going to wind some of my leaves up to the top because I want a little bit of something up here. I don't want to keep that bare. I have a couple of colors of green. I've got a dark green, a kind of a lime green. I'm going to use both those colors and a little white. I'm going to like triple load my brush almost. Not really carefully. Sometimes when you're doing this, you want to have a really careful load the tips of your brushes with the colors. But I'm going to be a little bit more uh, loose here and more painterly. So I'm going to simply just load my whole brush with that lime green. I'm going to just pop a little bit on the side with the dark green and maybe a little bit of white. So this is basically what my brush looks like. Sometimes I'll pat it down usually just to make sure it's not like a big glob of paint. And with that, I can go ahead and just make little leaves in one stroke. So I've got the middle shade of the green there and then a little bit of dark and white light at the same time. If it doesn't show up perfectly, that's okay. I use as many strokes as I can get off the paint of this brush and at some point it's going to be a little less uh, dark and light. But that's good. It gives you visual interest to your leaves and looks more natural. They're not all cookie cutter copies of each other. So when I need to, I just take go right back into the lime green, a little bit of white, a little bit of the dark green. And the stroke is like this. It's a little bit, I take my flat brush flat on, press it down. Sometimes I wiggle a little bit just to give it a little bit of a wiggly look. And if I just make a little lighter stroke, I can get a smaller leaf. And when I see that, it looks just lime green now. I go back in and I sometimes just grab the dark and the light if I have the middle shade of green in there. 
And I really just look at empty spaces on the piece and just put the leaves there. Many times I put them in little groups of three. So for instance, I've got one here, one like this, and one maybe coming out the middle. You could have just a, one little one peeking out. I just go around, like I say, and just fill in empty spots. But you do know I want to go up to the top of the gourd a little bit. And I'm not going to put flowers up there. You could. I'm going to just make it look like it might be a little vine going up there. And I'll scatter bees in between. So I'm going to just take a few little leaves and start them up the neck of that gourd. Here and there. And if you guys have been painting, let me know. Let me know, are you a painter? Do you want to learn to paint? Are you a little intimidated and thinking painting is hard and you need to be born with the, with the talent to draw and be able to paint people and all the things? Because you don't. And I'd love to encourage you to get started painting if you have a little bit of an inkling or now you find yourself with time to paint and you want to kind of pick it back up. So that's where I come in. I try to help you along step by baby step and uh, get you painting. I have some of my painters here watching, so say hello, and they'll tell you how much fun the painting journey is. So this was good. We got our leaves in, and that gave our sunflowers a little bit of time to dry. We're going to start... Good morning, Nancy from Michigan. Um, yes, Iris, so it isn't hard to start simply with a little bit of supplies and a few brushes, honestly, and then just follow along step by step. So I'm going to now start layering a little bit of a... My, maybe like it's a saffron yellow. I really like it. It's like an orangey yellow. And I'm going to start with that next. I might start mixing some white in with my yellows. Yellows are so transparent that to get them to cover the darker colors is difficult sometimes. But all I do is add a little white to my paint. And that helps them uh, get a little bit uh, more uh, opaque. And they will, they will start showing up. So I'm going to start just with that gold, for, for instance, and see how that looks. I'm going to layer my petals right on top. I'm not going to look and say, okay, I have to go between that two petals. No, I'm just going to go right on top and leave some of the orange peeking through, but it doesn't have to be in any particular order. I'm just going to get some of that more gold yellow in there now. I've got a little glob of dried up paint there. We'll get rid, rid of that. And I'm just, sometimes they're in between, some they're right on top. Like I said, I'm just going and making another layer of petals and I'm not worrying really where the orangey ones were. The surface seems dry to me. So I'm gonna add a little water to my paint as I go. So if your paint drags, it's not anything you're doing wrong. The paint just needs to be a little bit more like ink texture, a little to flow a little easier. Add some water. It might be a little more translucent, but I like the way that looks. Hey George, I've been thinking of you a lot to see what you are up to. I've been in the middle of all my moves, so it's been crazy. So are you in Eastport right now? And what are you doing? I know you were thinking of uh, moving up this way. So we've got to catch up. Let me know. We'll, we're, I'm heading home today, but I'll be back up on the weekend. And uh, the house will go on the market. So we will be mostly up here in Maine all summer. I'd love to meet up with you. George is my neighborhood friend from first grade. And he's an artist and a painter, too. We all went to commercial art together in high school. This one came out really um, see-through because of the water, but doesn't it look nice? I really like the way it looks. This is what you'll discover. Just try things and don't worry about how they come out because you're going to discover fun, little, cool techniques like this to me. I really like the way that looks really thin down. So I'm going to go around to all of my sunflowers and do that. And, um, oh, back to painting. So I am here on my page, which I'd love it if you gave me a follow. I do a lot of little tutorials and short little videos showing you some techniques. I also have videos over on YouTube if you want to check it out and Pinterest. If you want to follow me, I'm doing a little promotion that ends today on Pinterest. I am going to draw a winner from all of my followers on Pinterest. So you can jump over to Pinterest and, and just follow. I take your name from that list. And this afternoon or probably early evening, I'm going to make a uh, pull a name to win a big prize package of like some of my favorite supplies, my favorite brushes, some of my favorite paints, some of books I love have helped me along, some of my painting, a couple little paintings, um, some paint markers, different things that I find handy when I'm painting. 
And if you would like to do that, just pop, like I said, over to Pinterest and uh, just follow. And that's all you need to do. So I know that almost looks like it could be done, right? Those could be finished if you wanted. But I want to go one more layer lighter. Really make them pop. I'm going to give it a second to dry. So why don't we, while we're waiting for that, just put in where our little bees are going to go. And simply start by making the little bodies. Now, we're going to paint yellow bees on this turquoise, which is going to be hard to cover. So what I do is I'm going to paint my little bees in white first, just the little bodies. Then the yellow is really going to show up nicely. So say we want a little bee flying here on the top of the gourd. I sometimes make the bodies a little bit curved and sometimes just straight on. So we have a little bee body there. Sometimes I just make, let's put one right down here by the hole. And sometimes it's just a little jelly bean shape. But putting that little layer of white on really helps so when you go to put your yellow body on, you don't have to do a thousand coats and it won't cover anyway because with that dark underneath, it's hard. So I'm gonna put a little bee here. So we're, I'm just kind of looking at where's a little bit of an empty spot. I didn't specifically leave spaces for the bees, but I know I'm going to have lots of little places to put them. This might be a good one here too. It could be like a little curved one. Making sure you guys can see too. These, the gourd's good to paint for you guys because it's big and you can see it, which is nice. And remember, if you have to pop off the recording, and look, this is being recorded, you'll find it on my page and Craft Around the Clock. So if you don't see the whole thing or you want to pull it up later to paint by, you know you can find it. I usually put them up on YouTube as well. Oh, and like I was saying, I have those channels. I have the social media presence. I would love it if you kind of let other painter and creatives know I'm here. And... I also have a private, um, I have an art membership, two, two of them actually, which I can give you a little information as we are uh, painting. And if you are a new painter, it's a great way to really immerse yourself into uh, learning all of the techniques and things. So, um, bow gourds. Oh, you know what? I'm, I guess maybe they are out there. I have, like I said, a big, huge uh, bunch of these that someone gave me. So I thought I'm gonna stop painting them. Uh, she grew them, actually, and um, so they're the real gourds with gesso on them. I should have said that in the beginning, gessoed first, and then I painted the color. So they are fun. I've only done a few. I did one last year, maybe in the fall, if you caught it, was a, a, a painted as a pumpkin. And then I also have some as Santas, and we'll do more of those as the fall comes along. And so my little bees are there. I'm going to now just thin down the white paint. I like to make the bee wings a little transparent. So I'm just gonna throw them in there a little bit now. Very watered down uh, white paint. And I think I'll even take a dry brush because that's so watery, I could scoop a little out. And can you see how it's gonna start looking transparent because it's watery white paint. I dried my brush on my paper towel and used the dry brush just to pull out the paint in the middle. So here's, a, here's an area where we want the paint to be watery. And I'm going to just go ahead, and some of their wings, sometimes they go like this on both sides of the body. And sometimes they're just little wings on the top. But I'm going to just, again, dry off my brush, just pull out a little of the paint. Now, if the white paint dried too fast, you can't pull it out. You could always take a little of your turquoise and go back in. Because you can see, if you see the turquoise through, you can. it does look transparent there. I know. I love this teal with everything. I'm not a pink or pastel girl at all, but I love the teal and the, the hot raspberry pinks, you know, but I'm really liking the yellow on this too. So I, I hope you guys like that too. So little wings. Let's just going to get some little wings on our guy here. They look like little flying jelly beans. I know. And they can be different shapes. Some are a little heavier, some are thinner. It doesn't matter. And these guys down here, we'll put a little bit of wings on. See, I'm hardly even paying attention. It's just like little washy um, almond shapes kind of coming off the body there. And when that white body dries, we'll just put the yellow. And then after that, we'll put the little black stripes. And I'll keep a little bit of eye on time because uh, we have until 10. So we'll... We'll um, hustle along, but you'll get the you'll get the gist of it. But let's do one more layer of 
petal. So I'm going to my light yellow now, but I'm going to mix it with white a little bit. I'm not going to go over every petal because then we cover up what we had, but I want some light ones here and there. So let me just like put a few light ones. See how those pop? We, if we did it all around on every petal, it would we would lose that little pop of color. So I'm just doing it here and there. You don't have to do it everywhere. And I'm just going to keep reloading my brush as I need to. I'm trying to keep it a little random. I'm trying not to. It's hard sometimes not to do them all like in a perfect order. But this is all we need for the petals. If you didn't like what, you know, you didn't have enough yellow in or enough of orange, you can go back as many layers as you want for this. But when you think it looks done, just leave it. Don't really try to overwork it. So many times we have to just like step away from our work and give it a break and come back and you realize, oh, you know, it actually does look done. I don't need to keep um, picking at it. But it, I love the way they just pop where you see the darker ones, the duller, duller colors underneath. It's a nice way to add a little surprise to your painting and a little interest for your eye, for your viewer, is a little, you know, doll, doll, doll surprise and then put a nice pop of color there. Like I said, that could be that could be done. You could go and do more if you needed to, but let's call that done because we're work, we've got about 22 minutes left. No, 24 minutes left. Okay, I think. Is that right? Numbers are not my strong point. Big round centers are what make your sunflower too. Daisies would have a little more oval, smaller. These guys, you can go with a nice big center, and I'm using my dark brown and some black because I want it to be pretty dark. So it doesn't have to be a perfect circle either, so don't worry about that. So just get big, dark circles. If you've got just a little piece of a sunflower poking through, just do a little bit. So that peeking through. So that gives a dimension because that's kind of layered. That's behind now. So just go right around and put in your circles. So if you want information about, you know, follow me. You'll get information about my art membership, but it's kind of a fun time. I know some of my members are here watching. And what you get every month is I paint live with you twice by Zoom. Once is a class, once is kind of a casual sort of we hang out, we work on different elements, or if you have a problem or a painting you're working on, need help on there, or you want me to demo some particular thing, I can do that. And then there's also two recordings that come out to you each month, all original, new. And I know it sounds like a lot, but really it's not for you to speed paint through everything it's for you to pick what you like i do animals i do still lifes i do landscapes i do whimsical things just pick what your genre is don't feel like you have to do it all because actually it's we're going on two years now so there's more than two years paintings in there um for you to paint so you can just go in and search animals and just paint animals and all you want I'm going to be shortly scheduling, once my life gets settled with the moving, I'm gonna schedule a, a nice selection of classes for you to try if you just wanna see what the membership is like. You can come into that and try four different paintings and see what you like the way I teach and the kind of the, um, the content. And then you'll get more information about the membership after that. It's very low price. It's less than a paint night class monthly and you get all that information. I mean, all that content, and I'm around to always answer questions for you, so it's kind of fun. So I am going to put little vein lines in my leaves now, I'm taking just a little liner brush. I really thin my paint down when I'm doing this sort of work, and I'm just going to go on, and I always go from the flower out to the, to the can you see that? Yeah. Out to the leaf, because that way you get a little thicker vein, and it gets thinner as you pull your brush along. And I just do the sort of the same thing on each of them. And it just adds a little, I don't know, just a little something extra. Sometimes you don't need to put them, but I, I like to. I like to have it show up. I'm not being super careful that they all look perfect. Sometimes on the white side of the petal, you might see the vein very well. I think it looks more natural like that, though. You see the little lines? You could do it in a dark green, too. I've done them in dark green. Um, Sometimes if I have a really big leaf, I'll do them in dark green and then a little light uh, color, like white over the top here and there as a little highlight. These are pretty small and we've got a lot of them, so we don't need to do two colors for the veins. And we have some of these little free forming leaves here, so I might just connect it like down there. 
I can make like little vine curly cues and things afterwards as well. And it really is kind of fun. Like I said, oh, a little ladybug on one of these would look nice. The red, the little bit of red that would pop so easy. Just a little red blob with some black dots. You've got a ladybug. We'll see how much time we have. If I do, I will put one on. Afterwards, I always take a picture of the finished pieces and put them up. So do watch for that. If you ever see me painting and you have a question about something or another, please feel free to send me a message. I am happy to help you out. And if you're painting some gourds or anything with the um, uh, petals, uh, the petals, the sunflowers, please share them. I'd love to see it. Or whatever you're working on. It doesn't even have to be this. Whatever you're working on, whatever you're painting, please sh share it to the page. I, I welcome to, uh, everybody's work. I know on Saturdays we have a special share day, but anytime at all, please feel free to share your work. I'm looking here now. I've got a little uh, bee with no wings. So we'll give him a few wings. And let us put our little bodies in. So I'm going to go with the yellow, and I'm just going to go over the white for the bees' bodies. And you'll see how nice you can get it covered in one quick coat. So just yellow on our bees. Here's another thing, and I know I address it, and you're probably tired of hearing it, but I know so many people say, oh, I really want to learn to paint. I just don't have time. I don't have a place. I'm squeezed on a teeny tiny table right here, really. You don't need a lot of space, and you don't need a lot of time, as you can see by how quick all of us on the Craft Around the Clock page complete amazing projects, right? 45 minutes. So I think it's a great thing to just set aside, maybe even if it's 20, if you have 20 minutes a day, 25 minutes, maybe a half an hour, set it aside to sit down and you don't have to think about, oh, I've got to finish something. I've got to have a big project to work on. Just sit and just, you could practice brush strokes. You could sit and do some sketches or just research ideas of things you want to paint. And once you do that, you sort of get in the mindset that, oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to paint this now. And, you'll, and you will find yourself finding time to sit down and do it. I'm gonna take a little bit of my orangey uh, yellow because I think even though the bees are teeny, I just take that and put it around the sides and it gives them a little more form. So just that little stroke of that goldy yellow makes them look rounded. It's kind of like there's a little bit of a shadow on each side. So just a quick little couple strokes on each little bee. And then we'll put on our little black bits and then they turn into bees, so that's so easy. And that paint dried fast. So I'm gonna go right into my black, which has been sitting out a little bit. So I'm just taking a few drops of water to that black paint. Thin your paint as you go, especially like I say, for the detailed bits. And if I don't, I know your comments are going by. I'm trying to keep an eye on them. Um, I will go back when we're done and answer everything. And uh, so don't worry if I didn't get to see it or answer you while we're going. I definitely go back and look at everything afterwards. So that's good to good to kind of keep an eye on. Okay, so they have a little, I'm trying to do the upside down thing. Um, they have a little head, so it's just a little black. And then there's stripes. I don't just do stripes like this. I kind of do them as little lines so they have a bit of uh, looking like a little fuzzy bee so let me just show you what can you see how it, instead of just a swipe of a line I just made little lines just again just gives it more of a look of something a little fuzzy and I'm gonna quickly I know we, it seems like we don't have a lot of time but we do so I'm gonna go ahead and finish each little bee because I because I can so it's a little round ovalish head on them front and then I just do the stripes by little lines and sometimes the lines don't even connect but doesn't it make it look like a little fuzzy bee so let's just go ahead and give these guys stripes and I guess maybe they would hit two stripes and stuff I'm looking at a reference photo of a bee here because I don't always try to make them look exactly realistic I'm not doing a you know a detailed thing but I want to have it sort of right. So I do have some pictures of bees brought up on my iPad here. But yeah, keep an eye out. And if you want to send me a message, I'll make sure you're on my list and are notified when I set up that, that little set of classes for you. I just kind of want to be like a peek. It's the Tinker's Cart Art. Uh, my Tinker's Cart Art is my page. Tinker's Cartists is my private group. And... 
I will make sure you get the information when I do that little peek behind the scenes in the group. The other membership I have is a very simple one. It's just one painting a month, one recording a month. And uh, if you want just a little taste of it, that's a nice, uh, nice membership too. So either of those. And with the one painting a month, when you're in the group, you have access to the ones that came before too as well. But please just send me a message um, and I'll give you that, make sure that you get notified about that. I'm just in the thinking stages now, just organizing it. Alrighty. And one more bee, little, little head and just little stripes. And that could almost be enough. If you wanted to get fancy, you could put little vein lines in the, in the little wings. Um, they're pretty tiny. I might maybe just do a little separation of, it kind of is nice to actually do this. Let me show you close up. So I just sort of outlined that little bee's wings in white, but not a perfect line, just kind of a stop and start, just laying on the heavier white here and there, just to kind of, I had some on my finger, we don't want that. But can you see how it just brings it a little more alive? If it was a bigger bee, I would do little vein lines that same way. Uh, but we'll just give them a little touch here and there. And let me just do the finish the flowers up before we do that, because if we don't have time, you, you know what the bee looks like now. I've just got a little bit of smudge from my finger on here, but I just take a clean paintbrush and wipe that off. So it's easy to fix your mistakes in acrylics. You can paint right over something if you don't like it. Oh, Iris, of course, Tinker's Cart Art. And you can click on my name up here, and I think it will take you to my page, and you can give me a follow. I'm on all the socials, Tinker's Cart Art. So you should be able to find me easily and you can certainly just send me a message or leave and leave something in the comments and I will send you um, a link. I have a I have another private community, which is kind of nice. Um, that's a free community as well. And if you anyone's interested, just put something on there in the comments and I'll send you the, I'll put the link there for you. So now what, what do we need to do finish. We need to do a little bit on those centers. So I, what I do is a little sh little shading and highlighting, um, and it makes the center look round. So what I'm going to do is take a little, just a flat brush, and I think I'll take my burnt sienna, which is just that red-brown, and let me just put it on a little bit of my brush, just on the corner. And I do pat it, I put it on the corner, and then I just pat it off a little so I don't have too much. And this is how I'm going, and let me see if I can do it upside down for you. So I'm going to take the round center, and just going to take that, red brown and just kind of go on one side so it's like a little half moon of the red brown there i know it's a little glary but there you are and then i'm going to do the same thing in the center opposite it's going to start looking like it has a little dip you know a little dip in the center and the paint uh, the center is very dark so in order to make it look like it's a little dip i'm going to get a little bit of a lighter shade i don't think i want to just use white i'm going to just try light blue for fun um, sometimes when I highlight, especially if I'm doing like animals and it's a black animal or black fur or any object that's black and I want to put a highlight, I don't go in with white. It just looks very gray. I'm not, a, I, I paint with brighter colors. So I go with light blue. So if I've got a little, little dog I'm painting and his poodle or whatever, and it's black, black fur, I highlight all the light bits with light blue and it, it just looks a little more colorful and not like it's an older dog, because then you get the gray look. So it's kind of a little t tip I use. Um, I'm going to do it with the same brush. Let me just wipe the water off on that. So I'm taking a little light blue. Let's see here. I mix a lot right on the palette. I think it's more natural that the colors come out a little different each time. And I'm going to go on the left side. I did the red brown on the right side. I'm going to try this. I, I'm not, I haven't done this this way before, but I think I might like it a little bit. Let's see. I lost some of my brown. I want it to be less blue, more brown. Isn't it fun just to experiment live here? <laughs> and I want it really dark in the center center because that's like a little dip. So let me see what this looks like, and then I'll show you. See if that works. So I. where is it? Is it okay? So you can see the little bit of light blue on the on it'll be on your right side as you look at left. Uh, well, you know, light blue and then the 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 uh, red or the brown brown brownish red burnt sienna on one side. I want it to look like it's a little dip. Um, let's see. 
Um, I can't, let's see, I can see the bit of your comment there. Let's see, who's that? Oh, Charlotte. Yeah, hi. Charlotte says, let's see. Membership is a bargain. Yeah. I was going to it, yes. So I, I'm going to open up that membership for the same price that I've held for a little while. It's, um, it's 24 a month for all the four classes. And you get a lot for that. And for, like I said, I charge 35 and 45 for my one night paint nights. So I think it's a great deal because you get that personal touch. And the, even the more important thing is our amazing community of other creators and artists so it's kind of i'm there to help you along but what's nice is the encouragement and the no judgment zone and the all the other people who are learning um, to paint along with you it's kind of a nice creative uh community so yes and charlotte's been my member for a while too so she can give you you know you can get get it the, from from her even a better idea how it all goes so but yeah, so I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm moving in the middle of moving, so I'm getting settled. I'm going to offer that four classes for you just to get a feel. We'll do an animal. We'll do some fun things. I've got some of the paintings done already. And then you can decide if it's something that you might want to join. And there's no obligation. You could join and say, oh, it's not for me. You don't have to stick around. You don't have to stay in it. But it, um, most people do. So anyway, okay. So that's just a little bit of the center just to make it look like there's a little dip in there. Then what I do is I put these little pollen dots. If I had a very big sunflower, I might make some little vein lines coming out. I, let's try one, but you don't really have to on these. But if you wanted to, I just take some dark brown, really watered down, and you could make some little vein lines coming out into the petals if you wish. Let's see how it looks and we can decide if we want to do it. On a big, big sunflower, I would definitely do it. On littler ones, you might need it. And it's just the dark brown, really thin down coming out from the center. See them there? But what I like to do now is put little pollen dots all around the center. You could use your tip of your brush. You could use the back end of your brush if it's a thin one. I have these little uh, styluses, which are kind of beat up, but they work. A toothpick works great. All I do is scatter these pollen dots all around the center. They can go on the center, on the petals. They're not going to be a perfect little outline. And I just use whatever colors I have on my palette. So I'm just going to go right around. And I'm going to do this with all the colors. And you can see if it's something that you like. I like the way it looks. And I just, like I say, I go a little bit inside on the center, a little bit outside. And I use all of these colors. If I had purple, I love the sunflowers on purple. I do a lot of those at my paint nights. And the purple is fun when you put on the little pollen dots. I did some orange. I could do some yellow. Very uneven, not a perfect band of little dots. They go in and out. If they don't show up because you're on a yellow bit, that's okay. They'll show up when you're on the darker petals. Red is nice if you had it. I have that dark brown. That shows up nice here. I put some green. That lime green is nice. Have a good time. It's, um, this one seems like we have plenty of time, and we did a lot, right? Isn't this a lot? And we've not even been going for 45 minutes yet. So see what you can accomplish. You can just take my videos like this and just do step-by-step step along with them. When we paint live in my group, sometimes people paint along, and sometimes people watch and then come to the video after and, watch, and uh, paint. So let's see, maybe a few of the dark green. Oh, some white ones will really pop. So the last ones will do a few white. And even though it's wet and wet, these are okay. They're just kind of dotting in there. If a couple of them mix together the colors, that's fine. But doesn't this finish it off really nicely? I'm trying to get... So, see, there's a little dip like you see on the sunflowers sometimes. And we, I do like the little veins. And uh, if you look at it later and it seems like, oh, it's just a little dull, you could certainly, it's acrylic, so you can do whatever you want. You could go back in with a few little even brighter petals. Like, like oh, I just want a few kind of really bright little ones poking out here and there. If it's just a little dull still. That's when you step back at the end of your painting and decide what it might need, if it needs anything. And you can, you know, do that same thing for all of these petals uh, in the little centers. Sometimes I do little curly cues if it needs it. Like when I'm doing the veins, I would take my paint, which is my white, which was thinned down. 
if you like that look, you could just go and maybe make some little curly cues here and there to finish it off. Up on the stem, you could do some smaller vines with just some smaller leaves. So what do you guys think? I'll work on the other, uh, some more scented so you can get the hang of that. Um, but what do you guys think of that little birdhouse? When it is finished, I would use a water-based polyurethane on it just to protect it, especially if it's going outside. Even if it was hanging indoors, I like the sheen and it brightens up the colors a little bit sometimes. And it's just a water-based poly. And actually, I just go to the hardware store and I get the um, Minwax Polycrill. And it works great. And um, so let's work on another center just so you can kind of see how I do that. And then let's see, we have, it's 9.55, we have five minutes. So if you have any questions, let me get my computer lit up again here. And if you have anything you need to know right now, you can ask me. And if not, I will come back and answer them. So, oh, thank you guys. Thanks. Looking gourd. I love it, Rebecca. That's so funny. <laughs> That's great. So I'm going to watch my uh, comments there too. So if you have any, just put them up there. And I'm going to go back with my flat brush. And again, I'm using the flat brush. You might want to use a filbert. I like the filberts too. That's more of a rounded brush. I use that for a lot of things. If you find using, you have more control with your little round brush, you can do that too. You can make anything work. If I wanted to use the round brush, say, to do my little uh, highlighting and shading here, I would just take my burnt sienna, which is that brown, which we did just with the flat brush with on the corner. But if we just take it on our little brush, you have more control, you feel more comfortable. You could just do the same thing. I got that little half moon shape there. But what I would do now is I would dry that brush off and soften it. When we're using the big flat brush with the color on the corner, it sort of does this in one stroke. It has softened it. So you can do it this way, though. It's whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of times for some of the little detail work, you can use a paint marker if you're more comfortable. I tried to make it, thank you, Barbara, so that it's comfortable for you getting started and not to be afraid and just give it a whirl and so i'm going to just do the little burnt sienna shading on one side what i would do normally if i was painting these i would do them all at once um, and then go and do the next little bit and then do all of the little pollen dots all at once and all the veins all at once but i want to make sure you saw the whole process so that's why i kind of broke it up a little bit so same thing, I'm just going to paint on this highlight and soften it. It's only on the one side right now because I'm going to go back and do a little half circle in the middle like I did for the, for the others. So I'm going to do a bunch of little gourds. Some of them are drilled out for the birdhouse. And like I said, the little ones will be just decorative. I'll still put little holes in them and put a little rawhide hanger. And I'll do that one up with the sunflowers so you can see how nice it looks on the black background too. That really looks great. We're gonna wrap up in a minute. We have Crafty Farmers coming up next on Craft Around the Clock. So I encourage you to follow Craft Around the Clock and get uh, every every 45 minutes during the week, during Monday through Friday, early morning till evening, new crafters. It's such a fun group. And even if it's not the exact craft that you're working on, I still listen to them all because I love seeing, I pick up little ideas of how to make a bow or how to distress something, or it's really just like a great little community and you will um, really enjoy it. So if you're one of my craft around the, uh, my Tinker's Cart art peeps, please follow the uh, link in my description there too. Uh, hey, thank you Rhonda for watching. Let's see, we've got a minute left. What do you think? I think it's gonna be finished in a few minutes and I'm going to take some photos for you. I'm also gonna finish up the bigger, well, it's a little bigger. So they're all shapes. It's so fun because they're all different shapes. So I am thankful for you guys for watching me, tuning in on a Monday morning. And like I said, I have so much fun painting with you all. Hi, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I will sit here and paint all along, but it's nice to have company. So when I'm here and you guys are here, it's like I'm painting with my friends and I really love that. So do um, stay tuned. And hi, Charlotte. I will talk to you later. And thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you for all my new people. I know when I go back after, I always have my new people and I want to welcome you very much. And uh, go and take a look at YouTube. You can find some longer classes if you want to get a little more in-depth. 
and consider the Tinker's Cardist membership maybe when that comes around. Thank you for watching, Pam. And what a great day. We're going to have a whole week. We have a whole week now, Monday through Friday, of Crafters on Craft Around the Clock. It'll be great. So stay tuned. What you need to do now, though, is just refresh your page so you can see the next person. And I will see you soon. Bye.